Hi everyone, this is Victor here. Welcome to the Intelligent Investor channel. In this video, I'm going to explain why Tesla stock has crashed as much as 70% from the most recent peak and whether Tesla stock is undervalued now. Tesla's market cap peaked at 1.2 trillion in November 2021. Now at the time of making this video, Tesla's market cap is at 389 billion. This means Tesla's market cap has dropped as much as 70% from its most recent peak ever since Elon Musk decided to buy Twitter and become its CEO. So in this video, I'm going to talk about these topics to see if Tesla's stock will recover over the long run. First, Tesla's bear case. You learn about Tesla's biggest concerns right now. Second, Tesla's bull case. You learn about whether Tesla stock will recover over the long run. And third, Tesla's updated intrinsic value. You will learn how to calculate Tesla's intrinsic value. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. I will continue to make many excellent investing videos a week that will help you become a great investor. Also, if you like this channel and want to support it, check out my Patreon blog in the video description and become a premium member. Our goal is to create the best intelligent investor community that will help all our members grow their stock portfolios to over seven figures over time. With your support, we will be able to stay independent and create many excellent stock analysis and investing videos every week that will help you become a great investor. The link is in the video description. Take a look, let's start. Obviously, Elon Musk being distracted by Twitter is the biggest reason that Tesla stock has dropped as much as 70% from its most recent peak. As of now, Elon Musk runs three very different companies, Tesla, SpaceX, and Twitter. Many investors are concerned that Elon Musk may sell more Tesla shares if Twitter needs more funding. Twitter's biggest problem now is that it is carrying 13 billion of debts after Elon Musk bought out the company for 44 billion. According to the Wall Street Journal, because of the 13 billion debts, Twitter is paying more than 1 billion in interest payments each year. I believe Twitter's annual debt payment will likely increase even more as the US Fed continues to increase rates in the upcoming months. Twitter's ad revenue has dropped significantly in recent months because of many macroeconomic headwinds that are affecting the entire advertising market. Also, many advertisers decided to leave Twitter after Elon Musk bought out the company. Because of the current macroeconomic headwinds around the world and an expected recession, Elon Musk is concerned that Twitter may run out of cash and go bankrupt, which is the worst case scenario. This is why Elon Musk decided to lay off 50% of Twitter employees and is looking for ways to generate more revenue for Twitter. According to the Wall Street Journal, Elon Musk has sold more than 39 billion of Tesla shares since Tesla stock peaked in November 2021. Elon Musk used most of this money to buy out Twitter. I believe the risk of Elon Musk selling more Tesla shares will continue going forward until Twitter becomes more profitable and until Twitter has a new CEO. If Twitter needs more funding, Elon Musk may be forced to sell more Tesla shares, even if he said that he's not planning to sell more Tesla shares for at least 18 months to 24 months. Moreover, many large Tesla investors are not happy that Elon Musk is spending too much time running Twitter and not focusing on Tesla in love. I believe it will take time for Elon to find the right CEO to run Twitter. Even if he finds the right CEO to run Twitter, I believe he will still be very active in running Twitter. For example, he stated that he's planning to run Twitter's software and servers team once he finds someone foolish enough to run Twitter. Expected lower demand is the second biggest reason that Tesla stock has dropped 70% from the most recent peak. Tesla's management expects that Tesla can still achieve an average of 50% annual delivery growth over the next several years. Management gave this outlook. We plan to grow our manufacturing capacity as quickly as possible. Over a multi-year horizon, we expect to achieve 50% average annual growth in vehicle deliveries. The rate of growth will depend on our equipment capacity, factory uptime, operational efficiency, and the capacity and stability of the supply chain. According to analyst consensus, Tesla is expected to deliver about 1.34 million vehicles for the full year in 2022, or up 43% from 2021. Next year, analysts expect that Tesla should deliver about 1.96 million vehicles in 2023, or up 46% from 2022. This shows that Tesla's annual vehicle delivery growth will likely slow down in 2023, below the 50% annual delivery growth mainly because of high inflation, high interest rates around the world, and all the macroeconomic headwinds that are affecting consumer demand for electric vehicles. Recently, Tesla started offering larger discounts to encourage buyers to buy Model 3 and Model Y earlier instead of waiting for the 7,500 federal EV tax credit to come into full effect in 2023. 
I believe this is a sanction that Tesla's EV demand has softened a lot in recent months, very likely because of the macro headwinds around the world and increasing competition in the US, Europe, and China. According to Inside EVs and this estimate here, you can see Tesla's estimated order backlog has decreased significantly in recent months. I think this estimate suggests that the demand for Tesla EVs has softened significantly in recent months because of high inflation, high interest rates, and very intense competition in China. Here's another sign that shows Tesla's EV demand has slowed down a lot in recent months. This is from the Wall Street Journal. You can see customer wait times for new Teslas in both the US and China have slowed down significantly in recent months. For example, in the US, it would take Tesla 30 weeks to deliver a Model 3 standard range if you bought it in October 2021. According to the latest data here, it would take Tesla less than a month to deliver a Model 3 standard range in the US. I believe this shows Tesla's EV demand has slowed down very likely because of many macro headwinds. In my opinion, I believe softening demand, an economic recession, high inflation, high interest rates, and increasing competition are the biggest risks for Tesla, at least for the short term in 2023 and 2024. Here's the most important question if you're a Tesla investor. Will Tesla stock eventually recover over the long run? I'll give you my opinion here. Personally, I believe Tesla will eventually recover over the long run because Tesla's fundamentals, first-class management, competitive advantage, and long-term growth prospects have not changed. For example, even in this high inflation market, Tesla is expected to deliver about 1.34 million vehicles for the full year in 2022, or up 43% from 2021. Next year, Tesla is expected to deliver about 1.96 million vehicles in 2023, or up 46% from 2022. According to Second Alpha, even in this high inflation and recessionary market, Tesla's earnings per share are expected to grow about 35% in 2023 and about 23% in 2024. Realistically, I think the demand for Tesla EVs should be lower in 2023 and 2024 because of all the macro headwinds, such as high inflation and high interest rates that are affecting consumer demand for EVs. Tesla's biggest markets are the US, Europe, and China. The US is likely heading into a recession in 2023. Europe is likely already in a recession because of the war in Ukraine, high inflation, high energy prices, and high interest rates. China's economy will continue to be impacted by COVID-19 restrictions in 2023. In 2023 and 2024, I think it's reasonable to expect that Tesla's annual vehicle delivery growth should be below 50% each year. The US Inflation Reduction Act's EV tax credits will benefit Tesla going forward, starting in January 2023. I believe it will help Tesla's vehicle delivery growth going forward. Starting in January 2023, many EV buyers in the US will be able to qualify for an EV tax credit up to $7,500 when they're buying a Model 3 or Model Y under $55,000, or when they're buying the upcoming Cybertruck under $80,000. In terms of long-term prospects, I believe the demand for Tesla's EVs will recover when the US Fed starts lowering interest rates, very likely starting in 2024. According to the latest FOMC economic projection, the US Fed's interest rate is expected to peak in 2023. Then the US Fed is expected to start lowering rates sometime in 2024 once they see the US inflation has come down significantly in a sustained way toward the 2% target. High inflation and high borrowing costs are two of the biggest reasons that are affecting the demand for EVs. Model 3 and Model Y are the biggest revenue drivers for Tesla because they are affordable for mass consumers. Most of Tesla's sales come from Model 3 and Model Y every quarter. I believe the upcoming Cybertruck will be a large revenue driver for Tesla going forward because it will be another affordable EV for mass consumers, similar to the Model 3 and Model Y. Tesla's long-term goal is to produce 20 million vehicles a year by 2030. Obviously, this is very hard to achieve. To achieve this, Elon Musk said that Tesla will eventually need 10 to 12 gigafactories. At the time of making this video, Tesla is expected to deliver about 1.34 million vehicles for the full year in 2022 and about 1.96 million vehicles in 2023. Tesla has four main gigafactories, Fremont, California, Austin, Texas, Shanghai, China, and Berlin, Germany. Tesla also has the Nevada Gigafactory to make the Tesla semi-truck. This means Tesla will need to 
open five to seven giga factories between 2023 and 2030 in order to produce 20 million vehicles a year in 2030. In my opinion, I think Tesla making 20 million vehicles a year would be very hard to achieve. But personally, I would never bet against Elon Musk's ambitious goals. But if I have to guess, I think it's reasonable to expect that Tesla will eventually be able to produce between 5 and 10 million vehicles a year because of Tesla's manufacturing processes, economies of scale, and an increasing number of gigafactories around the world. Just to compare, Toyota sold 10.5 million cars in 2021, and Volkswagen Group sold around 8.9 million cars in 2021. Here's an important part from Tesla's most recent earnings call. And then with respect to batteries, we're moving as fast as possible to achieve 1,000 gigawatt hours a year of production capacity in the United States, vertically integrated, and no cathode refining. We're moving at top speed to do that. Tesla is aiming to produce 1,000 gigawatt hours a year in the US. If Tesla succeeds in this, Tesla will become one of the largest battery makers in the world. Just to compare, according to this article here, the largest battery maker in the world, CATL from China, had a battery capacity of 170 gigawatt hours in 2021. CATL's battery capacity is expected to reach over 670 gigawatt hours by 2025. I want to show you how to calculate Tesla's interest value here, so you will know when Tesla stock becomes overvalued, fairly value, or undervalued now. If you want this calculator, you can download it from my Patreon blog in the video description. These are the key assumptions in this calculator. First, I define Tesla's intrinsic value as its future free cash flows discounted to the present day. The discount rate is 11%. You can use a higher discount rate here if you want to be more conservative. Tesla's most recent trailing 12 months of free cash flow is 8.92 billion. Based on the macro headwinds and the long-term prospects I talked about earlier, I believe Tesla's free cash flow will grow at a compound annual growth rate CAGR between 30% and 40% over the next 5 years. I think this growth rate is more conservative than my previous interest rate estimates for Tesla because this growth rate is actually lower than Tesla's expected 50% average annual growth rate in vehicle deliveries. Let's go over these three case scenarios here, worst case, normal case, and best case scenarios. Under the worst case scenario, we're assuming Tesla's free cash flow will grow at CHR of 30% over the next 5 years. If we forecast Tesla's free cash flow over the next 5 years and discount the free cash flow to the present day, Tesla's intrinsic value should be around $529 billion for the entire company or $153 per share. I'm giving this scenario a 25% probability here. Under the normal case scenario, we're assuming Tesla's free cash flow will grow at CHR of 35% over the next 5 years. Then Tesla's intrinsic value should be around $631 billion for the entire company or $182 per share. I'm giving this scenario a 50% probability here. Under the best case scenario, we're assuming Tesla's free cash flow will grow at a CAG of 40% over the next 5 years. Then Tesla's intrinsic value should be around $749 billion for the entire company or $216 per share. I'm giving this scenario a 25% probability here. If we add all these numbers here, Tesla's intrinsic value should be around $183 per share. Just to compare, Morningstar estimated Tesla's intrinsic value to be much higher at $250 per share. This means I believe Tesla is likely underwhelmed at the time of making this video. I have Tesla shares in my gold stock portfolio here. I also have other portfolios that have the same stocks. I will likely buy more Tesla shares going forward because I believe the demand for Tesla EVs will recover quickly when inflation comes down significantly and once the US Fed starts lowering interest rates very likely in 2024. Now, all these are only my opinions and my analysis based on my research. They are not financial wise. There are always risks associated with investing. You will need to do your own research and do your extra due diligence first before investing in anything. Thank you for watching this video and supporting our channel. This is Victor from the Intelligent Research channel and I will see you in the next video.